So in this video we're looking at photographing birds in the snow. I'm back at my hide location and for the last week or so we've had some really nice coating of snow. As you can see the bird bath um, is absolutely coated there and it's been like this for about a week. This morning the temperature was down to minus five I was driving here although come the weekend it's supposed to thaw out. So you have to make the most of the opportunities when they come. So what I'm actually doing is I'm actually photographing them here on this table there. That will give me a nice clean backdrop. I'm also trying to photograph them on the ground as, as well. I've got a table over there where I'm photographing sort of blackbirds, field fares, red wings. No real luck with the field fares and red wings yet. There are a few about somewhere, I've heard them but they're not really coming down but certainly the blackbird has been coming there regularly over there to the rotting apples. So I'll show you the setup that I'm using. You can't actually see the food here but it is actually there and that from the hide where I'm actually photographing I'm going to get a really nice clean sort of shot there. So the snow on the actual table is about sort of an inch or so deep. So what I've done is made a depression there and I've got bird cake sunflower hearts and closer up I've got some peanuts. From the viewpoint of the hide you're not going to see that at all and it's certainly bringing a lot of birds in. So this is the table that I've got the apples set up on. Fortunately this place is an orchard so there's plenty of rotten apples that I can get. The advantage of the table is it will give me a clear view on the background and that's quite important. One tip regarding apples for blackbirds and thrushes and field fares is that generally speaking they like rotting apples and if you buy them fresh from a supermarket they're going to be too hard. So a good tip is to actually sort of put them in the freeze for a day and then take them out and then when they start to thaw out they'll be really nice and soft and that's how the blackbirds like them. So you can see that I haven't just got apples actually on this bird table. I've got peanuts, I've got bird cake and that sort of thing uh, and that will help to draw the birds in. Certainly draw the starlings in, they'll get lots coming in there. So I've had a pretty productive morning in the hide today. We've had lots of birds coming in, lots of starlings, a few black birds, lots of small birds. Um, no sign of any field fares or red wings unfortunately. The annoying thing is they're about, I can hear them, but they're not coming down. I don't know why it is. Um, the light's been really quite bright today, um, but the contrast hasn't been too bad. The important thing when you're in a hide is to make sure you keep yourself warm. There's nothing worse than being cold trying to take pictures. You won't take your best pictures. So. Make sure you wrap up warm thermals, fingerless mittens helps. And the 150 to 400 with the 1.4 converter has been really good because when the small birds are here, I can do them quite easily. But even the starlings, which you might be able to hear on the microphone there, having a bit of a squabble over there, I can still get them in quite easily at 400 and even the small birds I can get in with a 1.24, 1.25 converter added. I had a male black cut um, down a little while ago, uh, looked really nice in the lighting sitting on top of the apples. So that was a real bonus. Actually, hold on, there's a green finch there. Yeah, that looks quite nice. Long tail tits are all down now, so let's... With long tail tits, I find if you shoot at 5.6 or even preferably f8, because they've got such a long tail, it's difficult to get the head and the tail sharp because they don't often sit parallel to you. So when they're slightly off, it helps if you just got that little bit of extra depth of field. The thing about long tailed tits is that they'll be down for a few minutes. You hear them, they'll go around in little bunches of three, fours and fives. And often as not, 
the first you'll know of them is you'll hear them before they even come down because they make a, a spluttering sound so you often hear them and then they'll be down there for five minutes and then they'll disappear and you won't see them for another hour or two so I'm starting off the still showing a dunnock although dunnocks are mainly ground feeding birds they will come onto the table when it's cold and the food is in short supply. In this short video clip I couldn't work out if it was just sitting awkwardly in the depression or if it was slightly injured. I had not seen any dunnocks limping and as you can see it certainly flew away okay. At the hide one bird I get a lot is blue tits. This video clip was shot in slow motion and here they are after the peanuts that I'd buried for the woodpecker. I like the way that the peanut goes flying through the air. Some of the other birds that were coming in were great tit, green finch, gold finch, collared dove and the woodpecker. When the woodpecker came down there was a starling already there and thinking that there might be a bit of a scrap I quickly switched the OM1 to Pro Capture SH2. Unfortunately this did not materialise and after a few seconds the starling flew off. The woodpecker was just about to start feeding and there was mad panic as all the birds flew off as a sparrowhawk came through. Fortunately for me in the panic the woodpecker flew towards the hide and using ProCap SH2 I achieved a nice sequence of shots as it took off. I particularly like the way it appears to be flying quite close to the ground although obviously it's not the ground, here's the table covered in snow. I did put some sunflower hearts on the ground and this brought in the small birds like Chaffinch and Dunnock as well as the larger birds like male pheasant and collared dove. Even using the 150 end of the 150 to 400 this collared dove was too close to get it all in as it flew away and I've clipped the top part of the wing. This jay came down to the bird paste that I had hidden amongst the scattered apples on the ground. The apples on the ground also brought in the blackbirds. I had positioned the table with the apples on next to a small apple tree and often birds would land on this before coming down onto the table. This shot of two starlings looking in opposite directions was taken with the 1.25 extender on the 150 to 400 mil lens. So here are a few shots of birds taken on the apples that are on the table. The advantage of the table is that it does allow you to throw the background nicely out of focus. And here are shots of black cap, robin, male blackbird, and squabbling starlings. So what I'm constantly looking out for is that really shot of starlings fighting. In the snow they look particularly attractive and I've got some nice shots already. I'm using Pro Capture SH2 and the advantage of that is that I can get these action sequences when they... The position from where I am in the hide, because the snow is an inch thick deep, I can actually bury the, the food into the snow and from the viewpoint of the hide you can't see that at all. The reason I've got actually apples on the table and actually on the ground is because some birds are a little bit reticent coming to apples on, on a table they're much happier coming down on the ground so the advantage of the table is it's going to give me a really clean backdrop but not always ideal when they're on the ground when I'm looking down at a 45 degree angle it's not the best viewpoint I'd be better off actually using my ground level sort of opening there and shooting there but uh, we had a, a, a song thrush come a little while ago 
and I haven't seen one of them here before. First off it landed actually on the table there with the snow and it looked at me and I looked at it and um, I didn't dare move because I didn't want to scare it. And it flew down onto the ground further over and was hopping about eating the apples and, and also picking up worms. So that was, that was great to actually get one of those. I haven't seen one of those here for, for some while. So what I'm going to do is finish up the video showing you some of the fighting starlings in the snow. In the snow they look particularly attractive and because I'm actually photographing them on the table it gives a very low viewpoint uh, angle for ph photography. They're not actually sort of they're not actually down down on the ground because I'm sitting up quite happily here at, at, at normal level. But because the table's up on um, you know quite up high, I can actually get shots where it looks as if I'm at ground level. So to finish up, I'm going to show shots of fighting starlings. Because these were taken on the table in front of the hide, I used the 40 to 150 f2.8 lens. Whilst the 150 to 400 mil was fine for individual shots of the birds on the table. For the fighting starlings, I needed to allow more space in the composition. Otherwise, I would be clipping wings in a lot of the images. Using ProCap SH2, all you have to do is watch the back of the screen and when the action happens, press the shutter button. I hope you enjoyed the video and found it helpful. Please check out some of the other videos on my YouTube channel and subscribe to be notified of future uploads. Thanks for watching.